Hey everyone, AppChasers.com here. Today we're taking a look at another Mac application, Pixelmator. Now this is available on the Mac App Store and uh, it's a great app for photo editing. Uh, what you're going to be able to do with it is uh, really make some beautiful changes to your photo and we'll go through some of the uh, main features right now. So we'll get out of the App Store here and we're going to launch up uh, Pixelmator. Uh, so we've got it right here in our deck. We'll launch Pixelmator and every time you launch it gives you these options. Open recent image, create a new image or an existing image. So we're going to open recent image, one that we've been working on. Uh, nice shot here of some Camaros. And what we're going to show you first is the uh, very powerful magic wand tool. And the magic wand tool shown right here in our tool palette over to the left is going to allow you to select certain areas of the image based on color relationships. So what we'll do here is we'll click on a color here and as we drag out we're increasing the tolerance of the selection area. So we're just going to drag that slowly, well we don't want any of the road there, up until we get to about 23 percent. And you'll see that that part of the image is selected. Now up here in the uh, at the top of our window here you'll see we've got are different uh, selection features here. Select a new one, uh, add to selection, subtract from selection, or intersect with selection. You're probably familiar with these. Uh, they're basically hotkey commands in Photoshop, but here we like the fact that they're visually laid out here in front of us. We've got add to selection here uh, already selected. So we're just going to want to create um, some more selections using the magic wand tool, and we'll just continue to add to uh, the selection that we're doing for the car right here. So we're basically selecting everything that you see in the picture that's blue. And you see here we need to do it a couple times just so we get everything. Don't want any of the grill there. And you just keep doing this until uh, you're happy with what you've got selected and it's representing pretty well what you want to change. And again, we're going to change the color of this Camaro to uh, from blue to really whatever we want. We'll show you how to do that now. So we'll just, let me just get the roof here, and we'll just grab that. That's pretty good. That's exactly what we want to see here. We've got it all highlighted, uh, showing just what we want to change. Now what we're going to do is go up into the Image menu bar and go down here to Hue and Selection. Now with Photoshop, you're probably familiar there is a hue and selection but here we really like how Pixelmator lays it out in a dial and notice too that when we went into the hue and saturation tool you can see here we're uh, just dragging on the dial and live changing the color of our selection you'll notice that when we went into this tool all the other uh, toolbars disappeared so we can just focus on changing the color. So I'd like to change it to uh, maybe a dark green color. So we'll get over here to green. Okay, well, that's a pretty bright green and uh, that's a little bit too bright for me. So we'll go down here to lightness and we can darken it right up there. Maybe we'll change the saturation, take some of the color out. You can see we can get rid of the color altogether there, make it a black Camaro, but we'll, we'll go back and give it some more saturation saturation, darken it up a little bit, and uh, looking pretty good here. And we'll hit OK. So that's the magic wand tool, uh, one of the great features here in Pixelmator. OK, so you can see we've got another image open now in Pixelmator, and we're going to show you the dodge and the burn tools. The dodge tool is over here on the left uh, palette here. And what that's going to allow us to do is lighten up some areas of the photo um, based on the range, which you see right across here at the top. So we got highlights that we can change, uh, mid-tones and shadows of the image. So we want to look at highlights because what we're going to do is uh, brighten up these lights here on the bridge. So we've selected our brush down here in the brushes palette, and we're going to go ahead and uh, just start dragging across the lights you can change the exposure or how much of an influence that the dodge tool is going to have and just drag right across the lights there and you can see them really starting to brighten up 
And we'll just drag across there. So we've really lightened up the picture here. Now the dodge tool, excuse me, the burn tool here, which looks like this, is going to do the opposite. It's going to darken up areas of the image. So let's say we want to darken up these buildings right here. We'll go over and select our brushes again. We'll go to midtones. We could even go into highlights. Let's try that first. And as we just drag around these buildings, you can see how it's darkening them, right? Uh, as we drag. So maybe not bring so much prominence to that uh, building in the background right there. We can go into sh well, shadows doing that. That's going to be a little bit too much. So we'll undo that. The quick control Z. There's no history palette in Pixelmator, but we can undo out of our actions uh, as many times as we want. So that's the dodge and the burn tool for lightening up and darkening areas of the image. Okay, so now we're going to look at the uh, sponge tool over here, and we're going to look at the clone tool, which is the stamp tool. But first we'll go into uh, the sponge tool. Now this is going to let us saturate and desaturate areas of the photo. So again, we've got our brush brushes palette open here. Maybe we'll go into our 50% or excuse me, our 50 uh, pixel brush. We're going to go into saturate up here. Remember where our control options are. And we're just going to start dragging in an area of the photo to saturate it. So we've got these areas down here, the blue and the magenta highlighted. We can go and start saturating this building here, really brighten it up. Maybe these trees over here. And you can see the image just starting to brighten right in front of us. So a lot of color down in here. We can really brighten those up uh, with the sponge tool set to saturate. Okay, so there's saturate, and we'll go back up here to desaturate now. And you can always change the uh, influence right here under flow. We've got it set to 100%, so let's desaturate some of the areas of the photo now. So we'll go into these buildings here, and you can see since we've got it set to 100%, we're just taking all the color right out, depending on how long we stay here on the uh, image. You can see that's just taking all the color right out. Get rid of that right there. So we can really set a, a really nice contrast with saturated areas of the photo and desaturated. Now let's go over into the clone stamp tool and we can select our uh, our brush again that we want to use. Maybe uh, let's try the 30 here and we're going to hold down option uh, first of all and notice how it says click an area to define the clone source. So what I wanted to do is show you how we can put a light right here where it seems that there's one missing on the bridge. So what we'll do is we'll click our clone source which will be this light and now you'll notice it's almost as if we're dragging a copy of the light over uh, to wherever we want to put it. So it gives us a live preview. So we'll just click and there's our uh, missing light replaced. So that's the clone tool. Really neat. Uh, just select uh, your brush size, we'll pick 100 here, and notice that now it's uh, going to let us, if we pick option here, let's put this building, let's put another one right there, and there it is. So you can just continue to do that uh, throughout the bottom of the picture. So that's the clone tool and the sponge tool in Pixelmator. Now lastly, we're going to show you the healing tool. Uh, and then a couple of other features here in, that are available in Pixelmator. So the heal tool is right here. It looks like a band-aid. It's going to get rid of, or it's going to just try to figure out ways to remove parts of the picture that you don't want. And it's very smart in how it does that. It's not perfect, but it does a pretty good job uh, depending on how quickly you want to uh, see a, a resolution here on your photo. So we're going to try and use the heal tool to get rid of the camels and uh, these two guys here in the Sahara Desert picture. So we'll just, uh, we got our brush picked here and uh, we're just going to drag over. You can see here it's lightening the image uh, just to kind of give a little preview of which area is going to be affected. So we just drag over the area and let uh, Pixelmator do its job. So you can, we've got a healing progress bar open. And uh, now they're gone. So it did a pretty good job. It's not perfect, but uh, we can, you know, use the smudge tool here. We'll get grab uh, another brush, and we can just kind of, you know, smudge this out. We'll get a little bit bigger brush there, but 
does an excellent job if you just want to quickly and easily remove part of an image. So next we're going to look at the full screen uh, capability here that's been built into Pixelmator. So right here we'll just go into full screen. Now that allows you to just remove all the clutter from your desktop, get rid of your uh, dock, and just focus on editing your image here in Pixelmator. Now the toolbar or the menu bar is still available. You just slide your cursor or your mouse up to the top of the screen and there it is. So that's the full screen mode. We'll get out of that by clicking up in the right hand corner and we'll be able to show you the versions. Now versions uh, from Mac OS 10 Lion uh, are available here by just clicking on the uh, right up here by the name of your image. So we can see here we can lock this version, duplicate it, revert to last open version or browse all versions. We'll click on browse all versions and that's going to go into what looks like time machine and you can see here we've got our two versions. We've got uh, the original version here and we can click on that and say yeah that's the one I want. So we'll restore it and now we're back into our uh, original version of the image in Pixelmator. Now let's show you how to export. And this would basically be since we're working with versions we don't have uh, an actual save feature here. We've got save as a version, but if you really want to save a JPEG or a PNG file, uh, we'll go into export. It's going to bring up our uh, export uh, dialog box. JPEG, uh, PNG file, TIFF, Photoshop file, which is nice. And what I like here is the fact that it shows the file size uh, that we're going to end up with. So you can see it's going to be a 14 megabyte Photoshop image. For a JPEG, it's only 250 kilobytes. Uh, let's see, it doesn't. Sh well, there we go. It shows the PNG. It's uh, 1.54 megabytes. So it's really uh, well laid out here in exporting a file. It's going to show you exactly what you're going to get: a PDF, two megabyte PDF. So we'll cancel out of there. Now those are just a few of the great features that are available in Pixelmator. Again, it's available in the Mac App Store right here. It won uh, Mac App Store Best of 2011. And uh, we really recommend it here at App Chaser. It's an excellent tool. It's going to be a lot speedier, a lot lighter on your uh, OS than Photoshop offers. And uh, overall a great product. That's Pixelmator available on the Mac App Store.